Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to try to save this painting. This is a gouache I did um, the other day on a watercolor painting board. However, there was something wrong with the board and watercolor didn't stick to it. So I tried gouache thinking that'll probably be fine. But no, it was actually flaking off the surface. So um, a couple of you guys suggested, hey, Lindsay, why don't you try resining that, adding resin on it that might save it. So I figured that's great. I've got some Envirotex light here that needs to be used up because it's going to go bad. And I figured what the heck, I've got nothing to lose. This was going to go to the, the burn pile because I, you know, it was going to flake off and make a mess. Um, so we're going to give it a try. So I've got a silicone mat here. I'm working in my old craft space on the big table because I want to be able to leave this to set up. It's going to take about eight hours. And I've got a couple of plastic cups here. And I want to put my gloves on before I forget because I usually forget. <laughs> and then I've got really sticky fingers for like a day resin is oh these oh I think my gloves are going bad too I think <laughs> oh my gosh I have not done resin in so long my my gloves are rotting got some food service gloves here I think so I'm like hey what the heck I'm gonna give it a try I haven't used Envirotex in a while I've used it before for doing like uh, serving trays and it works really good um, but I could tell this I've had this you're only supposed to keep your resin for about a year and I've had this for quite a while. So what I'm going to do first is pour in the resin. I think I'm going to need about, I think about five ounces. It was saying about one square foot, four ounces for one square foot or eight ounces for two square feet. This is just over one square foot. So I think if I do about two and a half ounces of each, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to eyeball the first amount that I'm putting in. That seems like a lot, but I don't know, I'm going to go by what the package says and better to mix up too much and too little. So now what I'm going to do that I had that first one poured, I'm going to make a mark on my cup and then I'm going to bring this other cup over and make sure I get it the same height because it needs to be exact. You cannot, there's no wiggle room in your, when you're using epoxy resin, when you're using the, um, when you're using the polyester resin, there is wiggle room. You just can just give it more time if you didn't put enough hardener in. And you can use more hardener if you're in a colder temperature. The downside of the polyester resin is that um, it's really stinky and it's a little bit toxic, I think. Like the fumes and the epoxy resin isn't. In fact, it doesn't really smell bad at all. All right. So, is that... Oh, I just need a little touch more. Um, now, I am like, you can't see this, but I am scooching down. And I am looking at this at, for, at eye level and making sure that it is exactly the same. You don't have to cover up your containers right off, so you can set this aside and clean that up. Uh, so if you have like a drip, just don't, I wouldn't, you know, try, um, I wouldn't bother cleaning it up right now, wait till you're done. So now what you got to do is you need to stir each of these containers separately for two minutes. I know, it seems like a wasted effort, but that's what it says on the package, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, when I come back, we will have stirred each of the individual containers for two minutes each. Actually, guys, I totally misread the instructions. You don't need to stir these before you mix them together. Um, so now what you're going to do <laughs> is you're going to pour, if your cups are big enough, you're going to pour uh, one into the other. And then I'm going to stir that up for two minutes. I thought that, because it says you have to mix it twice, I thought you were mixing each one individually to make sure it was stirred up. And then you were, um, and then you were mixing them together. But no, you're mixing them together in one container, and then you're going to pour it into a new container and mix it. So you do this for two minutes probably to make sure everything does get fully mixed. Okay, after two full minutes of mixing, we'll pour this into a new container and use a brand new stirring stick. So uh, again, I'm gonna mix and I'll catch you back when we pour it into the new container. All right, so this has been fully mixed for two minutes and now we're gonna pour it into a new container. Boy, it's got a lot of bubbles. I hope I hope they pop. You can breathe on the surface of your thing, your resin. This seems like a lot too. I'll have to grab some silicone molds and pour some excess out. 
I'm working over the silicone mat because all those little drips will peel right off when I'm done. Okay, we're scraping that. We're gonna mix this again. Do we have to do this for another two minutes? Another minute. Okay, that's better. That's better. Jeez. Especially since I mixed everything when I didn't need to mix it. So just make sure you scrape down the sides. You know, I've done resin before. Maybe I never read the instructions. <laughs> oh, I don't remember all this mixing, but it's been a while. I must have read the instruction when I did my tray because that that came out really well and I did it for a charity auction, so. And we're mixing. Ah, I'm getting a cramp. All right, I'll be back when I'm done mixing. Okay, we are mixed up here. We're mixed up all right, what can I say? Oh, shoot, I think I was supposed to use a new stir stick and there's my new stir stick. Guys, good thing this is not uh, an important project. Okay, I'm um, scraping off the excess. I'm gonna put these, um, I'm gonna use these little silicone molds kind of as feet so that I can set my board on so the excess can drip off. And this seems like, oh, you know what? I'm thinking that I need to pull these out a little bit further. Okay. Ooh, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? I wasn't sure if I was supposed to seal this before I did the resin, but since it's it's gouache on a white primed panel, I thought it'd be all right. We'll we'll see. This is strangely satisfying. Yeah, maybe I should put maybe I should put it all on there. I don't know. Yolo, what you got to lose, right? I should actually use up the rest of that resin, find some sort of project because I do not think it's going to last very long. Well, you know what? I think I think I could spread it out a little bit with a stick, but I think that was about right. I guess, it, well, you know what? It's going to be a really thick coat. It's self-leveling though, so it should be nice. Now, if you want a matte finish, the directions say you could actually sand it with a really like fine grit sandpaper and then use uh, some wax, something with carnauba wax on it and uh, and kind of buff it until you get the shine that you want. And then if you don't, if you dislike the matte finish, you just give it another coat of the Envirotex. Huh, I thought this would like, this is really thick. It's almost like honey. I thought this would kind of be like, like just sliding everywhere. Probably could use like a silicone tipped tool to like spread it around to the edges. I'm being really careful not to like touch the uh, the surface of the painting and I'm just kind of flooding the resin over it because I'm afraid I'm going to scrape off some paint. So I'll have to test how durable this is when it's done. I don't know how we'd really do that. I guess we'd just try uh, scratching it. I bet this will give it a little bit more UV resistance too. It doesn't seem to, ooh, is it reacting with the paint? I can't tell, I'm wondering if it's like gonna do anything funky to the gouache. It shouldn't, it's just a water-based paint. Unless it like seeps in the cracks where like, if any of the, the gouache coat cracked. Hmm. I'm gonna have to breathe on this because I don't have a torch. If I had like a torch, I could torch like above it and like remove the bubbles. It's a carbon dioxide that pops the bubbles, I guess. Not heat, otherwise I'd just use my heat tool, but I'm gonna have to breathe all over this thing. <clears throat> I have a, a map gas torch for bead making, but actually I should say I have a can of map gas because my, my, my torch isn't working. It didn't light last time I tried to use it. It's one of those Diamond Tech, Diamond Tech torches. And the one that came in my kit was actually dead in the box. And 
they sent me a new one. And I didn't use it that much, but I don't I just don't think they store well, you know. So I don't know, I've been kind of afraid to make glass beads because I'm afraid I'm gonna like blind myself with a flame. Ah, ooh, good. I just like accidentally scratched the painting, but it didn't damage it. All right, I think I'm gonna tip it around a little bit and see if everything is shiny. And then I'm gonna go in there and breathe on everything. Ooh, look at that. Strangely satisfying. I think I've got, I'm looking, I'm letting the light, the glare from the light tell me if it's, if I've done anything. Okay, so now I gotta breathe on this. Try to keep resin out of my hair, but I'm due for a haircut. <sighs> hey, look at that, that's crazy. Can you see? Okay, I just breathed there. I don't know if you can tell because of my glary lights. And look, I didn't breathe there. Look how bubbly that is. No bubbles. Bubbles? No bubbles. Okay, I'm gonna breathe on this whole thing. <sighs> Luckily, I am full of hot air. <sighs> Seriously lightheaded. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna pass out in a minute, but let me make sure I show you this before I do. Don't breathe on it too much because you'll kind of like dent the surface. I could just, I could probably just talk. I probably don't have to breathe so hard. Wow, those bubbles are all gone. That is insane. Guys, look at that. Wait. I hope I brushed my hair today. Look at that, guys. Oh, there's still some bubbles over the stream. I gotta get those, but look at that. It's so glossy and perfect. Oh, oops, I think I did something over there, though. I see a little, I see a little epoxyless, epoxyless, epoxylessness. <laughs> Too many fumes. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this cure. Look how shiny it is. It's like a perfect, if I, you could probably see my reflection. Can you see my reflection? Mm, no, I don't, I don't know. You can see the reflection of the lights like crystal clear. That is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna breathe on this a little bit more and uh, we'll see you when this is all done. I'm gonna take my gloves off before I can touch the camera though. Okay, we are back and I'm so thrilled with how this came out. Look, it's like shiny. It's like a mirror. I'm wearing a grubby old t-shirt, can you tell? And I don't have any makeup on. I don't know, can you see my reflection? <laughs> Look how glassy and shiny. It looks so lustrous and beautiful. I saved this painting. I think I'm gonna put this in a frame and give it to my father for Father's Day. I think he would enjoy that. Um, so yeah, it worked. It worked, I'm so excited. So thank you guys for suggesting that. I really appreciate it because I would not have thought of that on my own and I had some resin left over and I gotta show you the resin. So this is not sticky at all. Um, I could probably dent it with my fingernail if I tried. Um, it has, it's not very warm down here. It's in the 60s and it's raining today. So I'm gonna give this a full 72 hour cure time like the bottles say. But look at this. How fun is this? I kind of want, I don't know what to do, what I could do with this, but I kind of like would like to do something with it, but now I'm getting all grimy. Actually, my mat was kind of grimy, so the underside of that resin is, but how fun. I just love clean the peel up, the peel up cleanup. Maybe I could use these little, these little pieces for like page pebbles or something. I don't know, some embellishment on a card. I could glue it down to like a, um, piece of pattern paper and like cut around it or something. I got a bunch of little dots that I can make my own enamel dots actually. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest of this resin because look at this. This one here about half of what I have left so about a third of the bottle hardened right in the bottle because it was old and I didn't realize that it only had like a shelf life of about a year and I'm um, looking at this price tag I think it was probably from 2014 so I'm lucky that I got this that it hasn't completely hardened up on me so if you guys have any fun resin ideas um, let me know because I do definitely want to just use this up I have a lot of molds a lot of those Martha Stewart molds which are really fun um, but I've also made a lot of resin stuff in the past that I've never ended up using so that just sit in a bin with pendants so maybe I'll just make some little page pebbles or something I don't know but um, I really would like to use up this resin this week, maybe next week, and then have it, you know, so I don't waste it, so it just gets used. So if you have any ideas or something you want to see, let me know in the comments below, and uh, maybe I can make it happen. If it's really long and involved, though, I don't know. I don't know if I got it in me, but uh, I just want to share that project. It worked, so if you guys have a flaky painting, uh, 
this could be the way to fix it um, so that you don't lose it. You don't lose your hard work. I'm really thrilled with this. And it's so shiny. It's hard not to get the glare because I'm in the old space where I don't have the uh, uh, as fancy of lighting. But um, yeah, thanks for suggesting it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you enjoyed this. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.